Bitcoin's relentless run to $40,000 is looking slightly shaky. Let's have a look at it, the charts, the facts, the data today as we see Bitcoin pull back from the $38,000 mark and a lot of the profits and trading go into Ethereum, now getting very close to breaking out of its range at the time of this recording. Also on the back of this, a lot of altcoins have dropped overnight, just like we talked about in yesterday's video. What could potentially happen with those altcoins? Which brought up a lot of fantastic questions from you guys, which I'll get to at the end of this video. One in particular, which goes through the entire altcoin season. Something to pay very particular attention to at this stage in the cycle. So without further ado, let's dive in. You know the deal, hit the like and subscribe. It does go a long way to helping out the channel. And of course, if you wanna go that extra mile, drop your comments down below. All right, so a quick update of the traditional markets because we should know by now that these are the markets that control everything out there. We get some positivity in these markets on the longer term, the traditional markets, that allows more money to flow into riskier assets like Bitcoin and cryptos. That's why we always see, at least in this time and that stage of the cycle, a move in Bitcoin and cryptos is correlated with a bull market in the stock markets. We do see a bull market in the stock markets. We've gone through this many, many times, higher lows forming, higher highs forming. The bears always will come out and tell us that the market has to collapse, but of course it doesn't. The reason for that is, well, that's how lows are formed. Lows are formed on extremely bad news. The majority of the bad news happens at those very significant lows in the market. So in terms of a short term update, we're seeing a slight pullback here, but what the bears aren't alluding to is the market went up for nine to 10 days, nine on the S&P and 10 on the NASDAQ. And of course you have to have some sort of profit taking and a pullback, especially when you come up towards resistance levels. So look to the downside, roughly the 42 to 4,300 point region for the S&P 500. There is our 50% level if this is the top here at 4,400 points. Keep that in mind. For the NASDAQ, you can see that we had a nice push up. That was 10 days, 9.3% to the upside. And of course, you need to have some sort of pullback. You can't just go up in a straight line day after day after day. And that's exactly what we were talking about over the last few days, that there needs to be some sort of pullback. So I'm thinking we're looking at a healthy correction. It could take several days. We're not expecting it to be a one or two day pullback and skyrocket again. But at the end of the day, no one knows for sure. What we will know is, will this break and hold above that level and then consolidate sooner rather than later? Either way, I'm happy with a pullback to roughly 14,500 to 14,800 at um, say the worst case scenario down to these levels just under the 50% because we still have those lows from October holding up and then the 50% level at the 14,800 level. Ideally, you wanna see it a little bit shallower and above the 50% level, hold out and start to work its way higher again. That's the ideal scenario, but of course, doesn't mean it has to happen in an ideal scenario. Nonetheless, still in a bull market, markets are up, higher highs, higher lows, bad news forming at the macro lows, at big higher lows here in banking crisis. I'm gonna point that out all the way to the next peak because that was a major, extremely fantastic buy signal when you get that extreme news at a higher low in price, which is why I always come back to following the chart and watching the price because the media sees everything at the same level. All they see is extreme greed, extreme fear, extreme greed, extreme fear. But you, you can see that on a price chart, it was a higher price. So that's where we're sitting with the S&P and the NASDAQ, a little shorter than usual because we have a lot to get through for cryptocurrencies. So we've just closed for Bitcoin, slightly lower volume now and a big push overnight and then coming back to sit roughly 50%. Now I've got this up here that, so you can see it straight away, 59 days up from the September low, September 11, mind you. September 11 was the current low for Bitcoin in this cycle up from $25,000. Why is 59 important? Well, it's a two month cycle. And we have seen in the past many two months or three months, pretty much on those turning points. You can see we went down for roughly 60 exact days. And now we're up 59 days. And so if we start to see these turns happen around the month 
35 days, 60 days, 90 days, you can see that there is a pattern in these time frames. And I'm just going to pull a few here that look like roughly two to three months. You can see from the top in April to the top in July, exactly 90 days as well. And these are very, very important numbers when it comes to GAN analysis, which is what we focus here on the channel. 90 day turns once again, and we can probably see it to the lows as well, June to September 88. So almost dead on that three months again. This market absolutely loves the two and three month turns. And you might see a smaller turn on the one month as well. So while this is in play, we're at that two month mark, maybe we have another month or so to go, but I'd be cautious here, I'm not saying it's the end and the market's gonna collapse and all that sort of stuff, but just be cautious at those time frames, at the one month, the two month, the three month within the move. As I've just shown through this entire period and this period here in March, it, uh, it tends to like those turning periods. Now, if it is the turn, the next question was, well, how far is it going to pull back? Is Bitcoin gonna have a pullback here? Don't take this as trading advice. I'm not a financial advisor, all that sort of disclaimer info. The point I'm trying to make here is what we've seen in the past for this run up is roughly sort of 20 to 25% pullbacks, 22.6 and 20, what do we got here? 20%, 20.3%. And the latest one we had was 20, roughly 21, 22% as well. So I saw a comment saying, well, in the, in the past, Bitcoin has done 40% pullbacks, like in 2017. Some of these moves were 35, some of them were 40. Throw it onto log, you can see just the extreme of these. Does that mean that history isn't repeating? That's The way I look at it is that's not how that saying works out. The words that this time is different, those four words that destroy 90% of traders, they always think, well, this time is different. It's not gonna happen like the past. The thing that is the same is the pullback. The thing that is different is the uh, price of the pullback, the percentage of the pullback. It rhymes. It doesn't have to be exactly the same because then everyone would know, well, the market goes up and it pulls back exactly 40%. It, there's going to be a pullbacks, but it doesn't have to be the exact same amount that it happened. Uh, that, that's what happened in the past. So expect pullbacks. Don't expect it to be exactly the same. That doesn't mean that this time is different. It just means that the market doesn't behave exactly the same all the time, but it has very similar patterns. Market goes up, market goes down. That's the thing that repeats. So that's for BTC. We just need to get confirmation of a top and then we can start to project to the downside. You can see how these uh, some of these tops had formed in the past where we had a push up and then the close just came slightly under reversal and then the market started to trickle away. So from that point, you can start to get out your measuring tools and say, all right, let's have a look at 20, where's 20%, where's 30%, where's 40% to the downside. Uh, this could continue on a little bit further, but it just starts to get weaker to the upside. So from here for BTC, the market can continue to trend up, but the move to the upside might become less and less. We have a pretty strong move so far. So sometimes the move takes a little while to unfold and the momentum to stop before it reverses and then starts to come back the other way. It doesn't automatically just go straight up reverse and straight back down and then straight back up and straight back down. Psychologically, I think that's what a lot of people expect from price, but it takes time to unfold. And there was another comment I saw uh, in the comment section down here, apart from this one, um, just looking at uh, the possibility of the distribution taking place. And now I don't think there is a distribution taking place. It's hard to say after one day. So we've just come out of an accumulation here. I think it's going to take some time before we would see a shorter term shorter term distribution. This is the macro accumulation and we're going to see moves up and then the unfolding here of a potential distribution, some scoop ups of lower prices and then the market continue on to higher prices. This is going to unfold over many, many months. So let's just focus on the price, uh, the price at the moment and follow up from that point. Speaking of some of the news headlines, which I just want to make aware of everyone so that we can continue on with the charts themselves because everyone's going to be pointing at this stuff to say, this is why, this is why. And if you've been following markets for some time, you know the news is always wrong or it tells us things at the peaks of the market. So 
Be cautious when headlines come out. Be very cautious. Yes, the markets can continue up, but look at where they've come from. The trend has been up for quite some time and the moves might sound crazy from Ethereum 1800 to 2200. Sounds crazy, but Ethereum's gone from 800 bucks to 1800 bucks before the final move. Let's see if it is the final move. So BlackRock's Ethereum ETF plan is confirmed in NASDAQ filing. So BlackRock's coming after uh, Ethereum this time. So this is pretty recent, actually, just a few hours ago. So yeah, just be cautious of news headlines. I know they get really, really hyped up. The other thing, the other reason for Ethereum pumping up, which we'll get to in the charts in just a moment, is the liquidation. So again, those trying to short the market at the wrong time have been destroyed the last 12 hours, about $64 million of ETH shorts gone and 91 million of, of Bitcoin shorts. So you can see that uh, Bitcoin's pumped up, taking out probably some of those shorts who keep trying to short the market on the way up. I think that's probably one of the worst ways to, to go about the markets as they rise, trying to short them, especially in a bull market. It uh, typically leads to a lot of people losing money. Have a formulated plan that's back-tested that you can get gains on and you're safe. Even if you are wrong, you keep your position safe by managing the risk. And that comes in the form of how you distribute your funds uh, within your own trading plan. Anyway, this is the other piece that Ethereum is pumping up. The next thing for BTC, 12 Bitcoin ETFs have a brief window for SEC approval starting tomorrow. So basically you can see these headlines coming out and where uh, 60 days into a move to the upside. We're seeing big headlines. Well, here come the ETFs, brief window. They got to approve it or it's over. So really all I'm here, I just want to present the news headlines. It doesn't affect my trading whatsoever. It's just interesting to see the headlines at the timing of the market. And some say you can't time the markets. Well, I guess the, the, the news media and the market sentiment is pretty well timed at the peaks whether they're short-term peaks or long-term peaks. All right, now this is news that no one's probably excited about, but I really want to mention it because I think this is what crypto is all about. I'll give you 20 seconds. Binance rolls out its first ever self-custody Web3 wallet. Whether you like Binance or not, they're going to collapse this, that, I don't care. But this is what we want with crypto. We want self-custody. We want Web3 wallets. We want stuff that we can use our crypto and not be tied down by the rest of the media. I think it's oh, the rest of the governments and, and so on, right? I think it's important to mention this as new people come into the market because this is what it's about. And I suspect as we get towards the peak, there's going to be a lot of people in ETFs. If something happens at the collapse of the markets, like we've been talking about uh, for many months now, if they begin to roll over after 2026 or thereabouts, 2026, there could be some dire times for a lot of people who have their crypto, who have their money stuck with institutions. If you're self-custodying your own cryptocurrency, you have more control over it. Doesn't mean the government can't outlaw it and say, all cryptos are banned, hand in your Bitcoin, we need it because the markets are collapsing just like they did 100 years ago with gold, hand in your gold, the US needs it. So pay particular attention to these news events that are folding over the years. Nothing to be overly concerned about now because there's nothing we can do about it. Just check out your own self-custody. All right. Back to BTC, price target $42,000, macro higher lows, you get the picture. Why we're heading to 42, another fantastic question. They were wondering why the 50% level was not at 35,000. Great example or explanation here from another uh, uh, viewer. So thank you very much, guys. But that is essentially the two different 50%. The all-time high to the cycle low slashed in half. That is a critical level. And it looks like we are definitely on our way there. As you can see from the Aussie market, the um, Bitcoin versus AUD has now hit 50%. It's uh, closed. What's at the weekly chart here? So the daily closed just underneath it, 58,400 for us Aussies. That's what we're waiting for Bitcoin to close above on the 50% level. So it's done it there. I suspect it's going to do it on the US chart as well. And the other 50%, which we've overcome now is at the $35,000 level. We still need to close a little bit longer above that level, but you can see that eventually, I think we're going to um, clearly overcome that level. And then eventually in 2024, we'll overcome 42,200 as well. So that leads us on to ETH before we get to some of the altcoins as well. While I'm still recording this, ETH 21,016, it is very close to that April top, which Bitcoin has overcome, but ETH put in higher lows through the period when Bitcoin was putting in lower lows. 
the FTX collapse of Bitcoin was lower than the June low, which was after all of the DeFi and CeFi collapses, your Luna collapses, everything was collapsing through that period. And Ethereum went down pretty heavily uh, throughout that period. Now, over the course of the last uh, 12 to what is it now? 16 months, Ethereum has been putting in higher and higher lows, which is a, a very, very good sign for a stronger altcoin out here. The banking crisis low came up higher than the FTX crisis low and the cycle low as well. And it's managed to hold above the old previous all time high and consolidate above that level. So potentially we won't see under 14 or $1,500 for ETH now. There was a lot of calls for um, sub $800 throughout this entire period. But for some reason, you could see that it was getting stronger and stronger. And of course, the ETH lovers are going to throw out all sorts of reasons why it's getting stronger. You've got the deflation on the ETH. You've got this, you've got that. Whatever it might be, we'll find out in the future. We don't need to waste our time trying to figure that out. Just follow the chart and you can see that we've got higher lows since June of 2022, even when the market was at its most extremes. These are the two the most extreme events for crypto in the last 13 months now, FTX collapse and the banking crisis, and yet Ethereum has been able to hold above those levels throughout the entire period, which is no wonder why the ETH BTC chart is now pumping. This is uh, what we looked at in yesterday's video. It was on the way back down for those last couple of days, and then all of a sudden to the low, tested that, and then pumped up. Caution here, because we have not got above the 6%, that was the call that we're waiting for above 6% and above 6.4% for more confirmation that ETH is out of this low period. So it's good news short term, but we haven't got above those two key levels, 6%, 6.4%. The, uh, the good thing is, at least for the bulls, is that it's held above the June low here for the ETH BTC value and hasn't collapsed any further into this particular zone, which is why I was talking about in the previous videos. We don't know for sure where those lows are, but I like to be picking up some, or if not a lot, when the market is quite suppressed and suppressed on its Bitcoin value and its USD value, especially if I'm thinking these things are, uh, have got a long-term um, potential into the next cycle, which doesn't hold true for a lot of other altcoins. They're going to be great for pump and dumps. They're going to be great for six months, 12 months. That's a considerable amount of time for a lot of people, but I don't think they have the staying power of the next three years or five years. Like I guess uh, a lot of new investors will believe. They think it's going to be like the next Amazon or the next Facebook or whatever that's going to pump up 100x, 1000x. And unfortunately, the majority of these cryptocurrencies are probably only good for about six to 12 months. Which leads me on to the last point here. So there was a, a very great comment here from someone who's watched the channel for a very, very long time. Talking about cryptos, stuff that I've said here, some that are strong, some that are weak. You want to get into the strong stuff, but you're saying not to get into the strong stuff now. The big point here uh, comes down to timing. Timing is the one. And everyone says, well, you can't time the market and you're just a fool to do that. Why not just buy them all up now? Well, we can time it to a broader degree, and that's exactly what's happened over the course of the last several years when it comes to the Bitcoin dominance. We've been looking at lows in the dominance. We've been looking at the pump up in the dominance, and it's all going to come down to how long you want to spend in the market. And do you have a plan to get out if those coins actually don't move the way you want them to move? So I've got a couple of examples here. Render, June to May, roughly... 12 months, okay? You got 49 weeks here. Uh, that's basically 12 months up. And so far it's been coming down and it's now struggling here to stay above the 50% level. So it has run early. So it's a strong crypto at that time. And there's very few of them which have done very well against their Bitcoin value while the market has been down, which it was through this period and the market pumped up through this period. So not taking anything away from these old coins. We're just looking at the charts themselves. This has been strong. The point of the timing was bringing up the link example where it ran first and then did nothing for the entire bull market. So it comes down to timing. Are you getting into the market during the bear market and having a fantastic ride when everyone else is suffering? You know, that's more power to you. You're finding those really great coins that are doing it. But if you hold on for too long, then you give it all back. And that's the point of finding those strong versus the weak old coins, but then strong versus weak in terms of the timing of the market.
So what we just saw there, render, it's not confirmed yet, but if render continues on this downtrend, just be cautious when the major altcoin season comes up. What does that look like? Well, I'm looking for these big moves to the downside. You want to see those sort of moves that take out the Bitcoin dominance supports. And that is when the craziness of the altcoin season goes on. This was the DeFi summer. If I can see it's through just through this little period here. That's DeFi summer. Bitcoin ran again and then everything else got its turn. So it depends. Are you in it for this section or are you in the game for this section? You can be in it for both of those sections. Completely up to you guys. But that's render. Now the other one is uh, injective, which has just hit its high and reversed underneath the new all-time high. So pay attention to that. It's uh, It looks like it's gone on its few legs now. It's a few waves here for those Elliott wave uh analysts out there. You can see we've got a few of these moves happening. Is this going to continue on? That's yet to be decided, but it looks like it is coming to an end. Doesn't mean that it is the final end. It could continue its move, but it looks overly exhausted at this stage. Let's continue to follow up with these. This is what I'm talking about when it comes to altcoins. Some are going to have their day now. Some are going to have their day later. This is going to be that shorter uh, move with fewer the coins that are going to do fantastically well. But I think the bigger ones are coming later in 2024 that may not even be out. But at the end of the day, if you've got a plan in place, you can make money from anything. So don't put this, don't let this put you off. If you've got a plan and you know how to identify the swings and cryptos that are going to be stronger versus weaker, in this case, Solana is breaking tops versus ADA, which isn't breaking tops. Now you can see which ones are strong versus weak, which are getting bigger gains than the others. And Solana, better gains than ADA. Sorry to say, that's just the charts and the facts here. If you want to hear more facts, subscribe and like. And we've got the Melbourne uh, Australian Crypto Conference in Melbourne this week. And link is in the top of the video description. Thank you to everyone who is posting their questions down below. I know there's a few new folks coming into the market. So make sure you do hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date. You found your home of macro cycle analysis and the facts and the data in the charts. Thanks once again, guys. I'll see you real soon. Link in the top of the video description. We've got Black Friday special coming up real soon. You'll hear more about that in the coming days. All right, guys, catch you at the next one. Till then, take care and peace out.